Welcome to everyone to worship this morning. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm not Pastor Amanda. I'm Pastor Dennis Haney from, I'm retired, uh, living in DeKalb. It's good to be with you today to sub for Pastor Amanda this morning. I invite you to stand for the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. We have neglected actions that witness to your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent of things we have done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness, follow the way of the Spirit, and build up the body of Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the prayers of all who cry out and restores us to life through the death and resurrection of Christ Jesus. Therefore, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm gathering. Welcome again. Uh, it's good to be with you here at Grace Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Dennis Haney. Um, those of you who are really old timers might remember I preached here 30 years ago. Um, I was just beginning to lay the groundwork doing the canvassing to be, for the beginnings of Living Waters Lutheran Church over in Crystal Lake. And so at that time, Pastor John Clark and Marsha Johnson invited me to come over and preach uh, before we had our services up and going at Living Waters. And also during those years when we were at Living Waters, and my wife Beverly, wave your hand over there, she was your Saturday night organist um, during those years, and she played for funerals and weddings here. So if 
she played for one of your weddings, uh, you know, you may blame her. Uh, don't blame me. Um, but, so, but it's good to be, be back there with you this morning as we share this time of worship together. There are a couple of announcements um, that I was given. Um, <clears throat> first of all, Thanksgiving Eve service is Wednesday, November 23rd at 7. The mitten tree will be up from November 20th to December 24th and see the November 10th grace notes for details. Also, Thanksgiving altar display items are needed by November 20th. And again, see the November 10th grace notes for details on that. Are there any other announcements this morning? Since I'm new here, I don't know what's going on. You do. Are there any other announcements that need to be made today? Yes. Okay, very good. Any other announcements? Well, this is Veterans Day weekend, and so I would like to begin with a prayer for veterans today as we begin our worship. So if you'll join me in prayer, please. Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for the men and women who have served and defended our country and its values of freedom and justice that we hold so dear. Help us always to be mindful of the sacrifices that others have made and the hardships endured by their families and friends so that we may never take for granted the privileges that they have secured for us. Hear us, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We turn now to our scripture readings for the day. A reading from Malachi. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. All are invited to read Psalm 98 responsively. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Sing to the Lord with the harp with the harp and the voice of song. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all those who dwell therein. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. A reading from 2 Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they receive from us. For you yourselves know how to, you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you 
and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day, so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we did not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. Word of God, word of life. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. But. Not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's time for the children's sermon. Would the children like to come up, please? Is that everybody? Oh, we'll wait. How are you guys today? Good. All right. Thanks for coming up. Okay, so we're going to do some simple predictions, some simple guesses, okay? So a tradition in my family after church in this season is grandma's making chili today, and we're going to watch football. So... Who do we think is going to win today? Bears, Lions? Bears. Okay. That's what we hope for. So in just six hours, right, we're going to find out who's going to win. Okay? We're not going to probably worry about it, but six hours, we'll find out the answer. Okay? I'm going to have you guess what is in my pocket. Okay? I'm going to give you two choices. 
a quarter or the rest of my ice cream cone that I was too full to eat after dinner last night? You guess a quarter? What do you guess? Quarter. 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 Okay. You're right. Quarter. So was anybody super worried that I had a melted ice cream cone in my pocket? That I was going to destroy my jeans and get sticky stuff all over the church pew? No. Okay. Hmm. We're not worried yet. We don't really have anything to pray about. Okay, so let's do a different one. How about you're coming home from school, and you go past your neighbor's house, and you see a whole bunch of balloons outside. You see people dressed up. They're dancing around, you hear music, and you even see people eating cake. What would you guess is going on? What do you think? Birthday party. Birthday party. What do you think? Alligator. <laughs> What'd she say? Alligator. Oh, alligator party. Probably specifically an alligator party. Okay, very good guess. Okay. So. Hmm, we're still having just a beautiful week, right? Beautiful day, rainbows, sunshine. Okay, so say we're coming home from school and we go past our other neighbor's house and we see fire trucks, ambulance, and police cars. And people are out front and they are not looking happy. Frowning, possibly even crying. What will we might think's going on? House could have caught on fire. fire. What do you think? A, a fire. A fire. Okay. So now we don't really know. Okay. So now we go home to our house. We're sitting at the table. We take out our homework, eating an after school snack. But you're just finding yourself sitting there and you're like, okay, hmm, you just can't get it out of your mind. You probably weren't super worried about the party, right? you're sitting there and you're like hmm fire trucks <sighs> so then you know what you go to mom and dad and you say I just really am I don't know what's going on down there so mom and dad walk down to the house and they come back and they have an answer for you and they say do you want the good news or the bad news what are you gonna say first the good news okay the good news is everybody in the house is okay nobody was hurt Nobody has to go in the ambulance. All the dogs and cats, everything's okay. Well, what was the other question? What's the bad news? Well, the bad news is their house is really kind of destroyed from the fire. So they're going to have to move to a different house, and they're going to have to get all of their stuff fixed. So when we heard that everybody was okay and they didn't have to go in the ambulance, what does sometimes somebody say when they find out the good news? They say, oh, thank God. Well, then you're sitting there thinking, okay, well, if we had to thank God for the people not being injured, who should we blame for the fire? So in the gospel that we heard today, they talked about things that aren't so, aren't so nice. Famine, people are hungry, plagues is disease, earthquakes, bad weather, fire, floods, okay? So in this story, what Jesus wants us to know is that it's really super easy to thank God and trust in God when everything is great. But when it isn't great, <clears throat> then we're kind of left wondering, why the bad? So what we have to remember is the promise is not that everything will always be okay. That was never the promise. The promise, so when we're worried, we have two things. We have worry and we have hope. So anytime we become worried, the more that we get hopeful, it makes us feel better inside because of the worry. And so then that's when we remember that the promise was that God will always be with us. Not that everything's gonna be okay, but just when it's not okay, that he'll be with us. Okay, so you guys wanna say a prayer? Dear God, thank you so much today for the reminder that we always trust in you and thank you when it's sunny and there's rainbows and birthday cake and laughing, but we also want to remember that the promise 
that you give us through hope is only from you. Only from you can we get things like forgiveness of sin and eternal life. And we thank you for that, and we love you. Amen. Thanks, guys. I think she was right. I think it was an alligator party. That would make me dance. Brothers and sisters in Christ here at Grace Lutheran, to each of you so dearly loved of God, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our crucified but risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, our Christian worship year is just about to the end. The 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, it's been a long green season. Next Sunday is the Reign of Christ Sunday, the end of our Christian worship year. And then we start all over again with Advent and Christmas and Epiphany and Lent and Easter, marking the seasons of our faith. And as we draw near to the end of our worship year, the texts start pointing forward to the end. Pointing, pointing us forward in our living as well. And as we look forward, Jesus calls us to stay focused on our hope. Stay focused on your hope. It reminds me of growing up on a farm in southern Minnesota and plowing the fields. My dad always loved to go on a drive on Sunday afternoon, and he would always snicker at farmers that had curved f furrows through their fields, or planting rows that weren't straight. He always prided himself on having straight rows. And he would always say, oh, they took their, their eyes off the goal. They took their eyes off the end of the field when they were planting. And he would always lecture us, whenever you're out plowing, Always pick an object at the end. Pick an object on the other side of the field and keep your eyes on it and go straight for it and don't take your eyes off of it. Because if you take your eyes off of it for just a second, you're going to start wavering back and forth. And you're in trouble. In each of our lives, Jesus invites us to keep our focus. Keep our eyes open on what is ahead. Not the scary stuff, but the promise that is ahead for us. And never to lose hope, never to become terrified and fearful of the things of this world, as terrifying and fearful as they are. Jesus reminds us that, that nothing here is permanent. Nothing in this world is permanent. The disciples were with Jesus in Jerusalem. And of course, the disciples were country folks from up north in Galilee, and this was a big deal to take a trip down to Jerusalem and to see the temple, God's own house, they thought. This is where God lives, in the temple. It had taken years and years, centuries to build. And it was gorgeous, I'm sure. All kinds of jewels and gilded with gold. King Herod had done a good job restoring the temple after the Babylonian exile. And so I can imagine those, those disciples ooing and aahing as they wandered around looking at how beautiful the temple was. And Jesus says, it's not permanent. It's going to be torn down. And sure enough, 70 years later, in 70 AD, the Roman Empire leveled the temple in Jerusalem and most of the city. Nothing here is permanent. Kind of reminds me of years ago when I was a young man and we, our college choir toured Paris, France, and for the first time I went to Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Now you talk about a church. I mean, that is quite the monstrosity. I mean, it's gorgeous. And I was just a young man and so I was kind of like the disciples, ooing and aahing, wow, look at this place. 
I've never seen a church like this. And so it was with a little bit of terror that three years ago in 2019, I saw on the television the whole cathedral burning up in Paris. Again, a reminder of Jesus' words. Things in this world aren't permanent. Things here are temporary, no matter how grandiose they might seem to us. Religious institutions, they come and they go, Jesus says. False prophets will come and go. People who love to predict the end of time. People who claim to be the Messiah, claim to be from God himself. Oh my, <clears throat> over the years of my life, I've seen and heard of so many of these false prophets. I mean, I think back to Jim Jones and getting his followers to drink poison with him and commit suicide, or David Koresh down in Waco, Texas a few years ago. And I think back, the turn of the century, back in the year 2000, oh, there were all kinds of TV preachers proclaiming about how this was going to be the end of time, and, and they could see the signs, and, and Jesus is surely coming soon, so get ready. In every era, there have been false prophets that are a dime a dozen. And Jesus says, don't waste your time trying to predict God's future, because only God knows. And the future is in the hands of our God. And Jesus warns about wars and rumors of war and earthquakes and famines and plagues and religious persecution. <laughs> and you know, quite honestly, I feel like responding to Jesus, ho oh, hum, so what else is new? Wars and rumors of war. Need I only mention Ukraine? And the horrible catastrophe that the Russian dictator is inflicting upon that country and those people? Wow, that's enough to make you fear. And we've got earthquakes? Oh yeah, we have them quite frequently in this country. Fortunately here in, in Illinois we don't get them very often. But I remember a few times when I was in southern Illinois when I was driving along the road and the, earth, and the road began to do this and I thought something was wrong with my car and I pulled over to the side of the road and stopped and then I realized the whole earth was rolling. That's kind of scary. And the hurricanes, I mean Jesus didn't even mention hurricanes. First there was Ian and now Nicole. It's devastating parts of Florida and we've got climate change and what a threat that is to our future, the future of our planet, the future of the human race and famines, oh yeah we've got those too Jesus. People in many nations this morning are very malnourished and starving. Starvation is a reality in this world where you and I have way too much to eat. Plagues? Yeah, Jesus, there's plagues. We got them galore. My goodness, that was the 1918 flu plague. That was a couple of years before I was born, though. I don't remember that one. But I remember when I was a kid, the polio plague. Oh, how my parents were terrified that I would not get polio when I was a child. And we've had HIV AIDS plagues. And now we're dealing with the COVID plague. We don't call them plagues anymore. We call them a nice word, pandemics. They're plagues. That's what they are. They threaten us. Threaten to destroy us. A million people have died of COVID. 19 people died this week in the state of Illinois from COVID. And we, the latest I've heard is that there are more new waves of variants coming on us this winter. I mean, you talk about terrifying. And religious persecutions, oh yeah, we've got those places too all over the world where it's dangerous to be a Christian. And it's so easy then to get discouraged. It's so easy to let this world terrify us and discourage us and swallow our faith and to lose our hope and to give up. But there is hope. That's the theme of the end of our church worship year there is hope. And our hope is secure because our hope is, are, is not based on the things of this world. But our hope is based on the love of God for us in Christ Jesus our Lord.
there's hope. So Jesus invites us, invites his disciples, invites you and me. Hang in there, folks. Hang in there with me. Because the Father and I are in charge. No matter what the world may look like to you, the future belongs to our God. Hang in there with us. Hang in there. Hang in there in what can be a very frightening and terrifying world at times. So as you and I live into tomorrow in this scary world that we call human existence, as we live into tomorrow, keep remembering those words, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. Remember his words. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. Remember his words. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Remember his words. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, and not even a hair of your head will perish. There's hope. Even what little hair I have on my head is safe in Jesus Christ. There's hope. Old Kermit the Frog on Sesame Street used to sing, it's not easy being green. Well, our text today from Jesus says, folks, it may not be, always be easy being human. It may not always be easy living in this world. In fact, it can be downright terrifying. But hang in there. Hang in there in the one who is our light, our resurrection, our hope, our bread of life from heaven. So as you, brothers and sisters here at Grace Lutheran Church, go about living this week, be brave, be of good courage. For you are in Christ, and Christ is in you. Isn't that what we believe about Holy Communion? He comes to dwell in us, and we in him. His body and blood within us. We are his people. We are God's beloved children. That's the promise of baptism. And that promise of life forever. So don't be terrified. Hang on to that hope that is ours in Jesus Christ. He is the resurrection. And you're going to keep all your hair whatever you've got. Peace be with you. Amen.
Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead, and after the day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, Renewing God, as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick especially those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Uniting God, unite this assembly and its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. Highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreement. Lord, in your mercy. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones who have died. Comfort us with the promise of resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take a moment to share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you.
invite you to stand for the prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, maker of all things, as you have entrusted us with all that you have created. Now gather our gifts, nourish us with this sacrament, and send us to those who hunger and thirst for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection has opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, surrounded by evil and bordered by death, we appeal to you, our sovereign, our wisdom, and our judge. We praise you for Christ who proclaimed your reign of peace and promised an end to injustice and harm. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his sacri the sacrifice of his life and death and the victory of his resurrection, we await with all the saints his loving redemption of our suffering world. Send your spirit on these gifts of bread and wine and on all who share in the body and blood of your Son. Teach us your mercy and justice and make all things new in Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ spreads a table before you. Gather here with all the saints. You are welcome.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. And now may the God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Thank you.